हेलो एवरीवन स्टोरी टेलर शिवानी में आपका स्वागत है आज हम बात करेंगे द फ्रंटियर्स ऑफ क्रिटिसिज्म से क्या क्या ऑब्जेक्टिव या शॉर्ट क्वेश्चंस बन सकते हैं इस बारे में और इस टॉपिक पर बनी मेरी वीडियो देखने के लिए आप आई बटन पर क्लिक कर सकते हैं तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन है हु हैज़ रिटन द एस ए द फ्रंटियर्स ऑफ क्रिटिसिज्म सो द आंसर इज टी एस एलियट नेक्स्ट When was Eliot born? So he was born on twenty sixth September eighteen hundred eighty eight. Next, when was the Frontiers of Criticism written? So it was written in nineteen fifty six. Next question: What is Eliot's main thesis in his critical writings? So it is critical truths are not permanent and universal, and they cannot be valid for all times and ages. Next, what is the main cause that led to the transformation of literary criticism in the present age? Options are consideration of literature in the light of social and physical sciences, interest of the critics in the study of language and semantics, increasing attention given to the study of English in modern universities. A situation has arisen in which many critics are teacher and many teachers are critic, or all. So the answer is all. Next, fill in the blanks. There are limits exceeding which, in one direction, literary criticism ceases to be dash, and exceeding which, in another, it ceases to be dash. So the first one is literary, and the second is criticism. Next. Dash, like all other branches of knowledge, has become very rich and diversified. So the answer is criticism. Next, who has been generally believed to be the father of the new criticism? So the answer is Thomas Stearns Eliot, that is T. S. Eliot. Next, according to Eliot, the best of his literary criticism consists of. So it consists of essays on poets. and poetic dramatists who had influenced him next question the best part of eliot's literary criticism is a by product of so it is a by product of his private poetry workshop next what has eliot's criticism in common with that of ezra pound so it is that its merits and its limitations can be fully appreciated only when it is considered in relation to the poetry next question who is the author of the west land so the answer is t s eliot next the frontiers of criticism is actually a lecture that eliot has given at so it was given at the university of maineosta next what is the limitation of the workshop criticism options are what has no relation to the poet's own works or what is antipathetic to him is outside of his competence the critic's judgment may be unsound outside of his own art both or none so the answer is both next question what is the name of criticism in which criticism merges into scholarship and scholarship merges into criticism so it is the criticism of explanation by origin next what must the critic always remember so the critic must remember the difference between explanation and understanding next question what does not help us to understand poetry as poetry so it is biographical material next question i e richards school of psychological interpretation and William Emerson's school of verbal analysis is satirized by Eliot as so Eliot has satirized it as lemon squeezer schools of criticism next according to Eliot a poet is poet because so because his dominant interest has been in turning his experience and thought into poetry next If a critic fails to help us in understanding and enjoying poetry what would happen so it does not come under the category of literary criticism next question 
If we put all the emphasis upon dash, we might slip to mere explanatory criticism. So, it would be understanding. Next, if we overemphasize enjoyment, we might fall to what? So, we might fall to the subjective and impressionable type of criticism. Next question. The greatness of a poem depends on what? So, it depends on the intensity of the artistic process, the pressure under which the fusion takes place. Next, what is the duty of the critic? So, it is to find out the facts about a work or art. Next, complete the sentence. A critic must be the whole man, a man with... So... A man with convictions and principles and of knowledge and experience of life. And the last question. The essay is an attempt by Eliot too. So, the frontiers of criticism is an attempt to define the boundaries of literary criticism. So, I hope you liked this video. Thank you.